Hello and welcome back to Mana Lords and well, here we are on the development screen and we have two points to spend. Yeah, actually pretty impressive. I, I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Is, is, it, is it really impressive? I don't know. But I'm very, very much looking forward to doing this because look at this. Look at what we got right here. We got deep mining. This is going to be exceptional for us. This basically just means that, well... <laughs> We're going to have infinite amounts of money. Yes, infinite amounts of money in Bertildia, which is one of our regions, of course. And Berrytown also has a development point. So what are we actually going to be doing with Berrytown? Well, it's pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah, we kind of know what we want to do with that. And that is, of course, a trade improvement. So we're going to be taking trade logistics right here. Establishing a new trade route always costs a maximum of 25 regional wealth. In my opinion, I actually think... I think this is probably the most powerful upgrade that you can get. At least in the early game, okay? Early game, this is really, really strong. However, uh, as, as time goes on, obviously other things are going to be much better. I mean, sheep breeding was fantastic for us with my first region. I actually have no idea how I even earned enough regional wealth with my first region to make any of those things that I've done work back then without getting a trade route immediately. But anyway, we're going to be going for trade logistics here. I mean, come on, we just, we just can't not do that. It's so incredibly useful. Anyway, um, yeah, so my approval rating is obviously doing really, really nicely right here. As you can see right now, we currently have, well, I mean, it's obviously just changed. The, the month has just changed. But we're not getting any problems with homelessness any further because people are actually starting to move in for some reason. It's probably because I built the church because I think what actually needed to happen here is we needed to get the church so that the approval rating would increase and get us some additional families and then it kind of jump-started everything into action. At least that's what I think is happening. Okay, so yeah, the winter is now approaching. Now we are going to be having a bit of a problem in Bertildia here because we don't have enough firewood. <laughs> we don't have enough firewood. I have 195 firewood. Wait a minute, where's my woodcutter's lodge? Yeah, no, they're all working really, really hard, as you can see. We also have another one over here. We have another bunch of people over here, actually, and they're not working on this uh, at all. So I'm actually going to need to do that as well. Let's just do this too. And uh, yeah, my, my, my people here absolutely love it. They love living here for some reason. I don't know why, but they do. And, uh, well, this is pretty crazy. So what I can do is I can literally just go ahead and do this. And boom. Done. Look at that. Another eight Burgage plots right there. Really, really nice. Super, super easy for us to make that work. And we have 237 eggs and 370 berries. Now, you may be asking yourself, how do you have 237 eggs? Well, it's pretty easy. Now, this is another one of those times where I'm going to give you a small tip. Obviously, here's the thing. <laughs> Tips or not, I mean, you, you can obviously decide on what you want to do. This is not a thing that you must do to succeed in the game. Obviously not. There are many, many different ways that you can, you know, play Mana Lords and, and be successful. But from what I've seen so far, I personally feel like getting chicken coops in your backyards, that is far and away one of the best ways to do it. And I'm actually going to be, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just going to be getting an, another level two burgage plot right here. But yes, I've basically just done that in almost every single one of my little burgage plots around the side here. I've built a chicken coop, as you can see. There is another way, obviously, that you can improve your approval rating. You can actually make it so that you have even more market food variety. And that's obviously doing the other thing so instead of going for a chicken coop you go for things like a vegetable garden and so it's then going to provide people with vegetables as well as eggs as well as uh, berries 
And so then you're going to have three different kinds of food supplies. But I would personally recommend once you have gotten a huge amount of regional wealth, which obviously we do right now, but once you've gotten that, then you're going to be in a really, really good position. And we're just going to be placing my mana around about here. I don't really care where it is that much. And um, I actually don't... Do, do I do what do I what do I want to do here actually uh, do I want to do anything walls and gates an outer tower provides 10 garrison space does that actually do anything by the way does that <laughs> does that actually do anything I don't even know let's actually place it somewhere um, maybe it's gonna be fun I <laughs> I highly doubt it I highly doubt this is actually gonna do anything but uh, I'm gonna place it wait a minute wait a minute does it? Can I actually change the elevation of this thing? No, because I, 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 I want to put it on the top, but that's not going to work. So I guess I'll just put it there. That's quite funny. All right. It, it, can I put it somewhere else, actually? Can I put it, like, here? Oh, that expands my... Um, I don't even know what this is. What is this thing? I don't know. I, as I say, I've barely done anything with the um, with the mana and, and its customizations and everything, so I have no idea. But as you can see, it actually expands my influence of the mana or something like that. I actually have no idea. But uh, these things are really, um, well, expensive. As you can see, I actually don't even have enough to be able to make this. There we go. Now I do. Now I have enough to make it. So I can only get one because I just don't have enough timber right now. As you can see, I have 15. 15 timber. That's pretty bad, isn't it? But it's fine. It's enough to do what we need to do. And all my forces are going to do their thing now. I have three oxen, by the way. I can obviously get more if we want to. And we've got a bunch of sheep here as well. But of course, I am actually importing sheep. I am still importing sheep in actual fact. I have 20 as my desired surplus and I'm importing them as much as I possibly can. And then we're obviously turning those into, um, you know, clothes and so on. And um, yeah, I can actually now get other things here as well. So, you know, for example, I could get a tailor instead of a chicken coop right here. And I think that might actually make sense. Now that I think about it, it might actually make sense. So let's go for a tailor here. And uh, let's see, what else can we get actually? I could get some other stuff too. So for example, I could get some bows. I could start actually making bows, which would be really, really effective actually. However, I am gonna need shields and I am gonna need spears too. So I'm kind of thinking, should I? I mean, I, <laughs> we are literally the most over, th this is the most overpowered region in the entire game for me at the moment, because I have absolutely every single thing that I could want. I have the ability to get wood, obviously. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious we, we have the ability to get wood, you know, because there's trees everywhere. But apart from that, we also have the ability to produce tools at an astonishing rate. So a blacksmith is probably going to be fantastic for us. And what else do we have here? Well, I'm, I'm obviously just going to upgrade a couple of other things here as well. And, and then we can get a bow, a bow place, or we can get, I don't know, um, a cobbler's workshop potentially if we want to do that I don't know whether we really want to do that that much but I'm gonna go for bowman I guess gonna go for you know something to create bows and then we'll get uh, probably shields are gonna be quite important um, yeah let's get shields as well there you have it okay so this is gonna take us um, a pretty significant amount of time and I'm probably actually gonna remove some people from the uh, woodcutter's lodge we're going to remove one person from there one person from the logging camp and what we're going to do i'm not sure whether this is actually going to do anything because someone actually recommended that i go for a smaller marketplace um around here so i'm I, well not around here specifically but basically just have a smaller marketplace that is, um, you know, kind of in amongst the residential area. And maybe that's going to make a difference to the overall, uh, should we say, availability of resources. And now I have no idea whether that's actually going to be the case, obviously. But I'm thinking, hey, you know what? I'm willing to give it a go. Now we can upgrade this to a deep mine, which is exactly what we're going to go for. Obviously, we want to make sure that this is unlimited, unlimited power. Indeed, indeed, kind of. I mean, is it? Is it really? I don't know, but 
yeah anyway there you go that's looking very very nice right now let's go on to barneyville how are we doing here mm, we're doing okay we're doing all right uh, obviously the forager hut doesn't really have anything to do with it but i'm just going to leave it on there nevertheless because i might as well and i think i can actually upgrade things yet no i can't really oh we need clothing still we need clothing. I thought we had the uh, the tannery. Did I not? Did I not build a tannery somewhere? I thought I actually built one. Hmm. Let me see. Saw pit, forester's hut. Um. Well, I probably want to put someone on the forester's hut. Obviously, that's going to make a pretty big difference. And I actually think that we haven't built a tannery. Okay, well, that's going to make a pretty big difference then, isn't it? Actually, wait a minute. No, no, there it is. There's the tannery. Okay. Let's put that on highest construction, and hopefully that's going to get done relatively soon. We're going to need that, actually. I feel like that's going to be very, very important for us. And the clay pit, not very important here. Wild animals, that's fine. This is going to be very important, so we do need deep mining on this too. But I am going to need a development point. To be able to get trade logistics once again that's going to be extremely important for us otherwise i'm doing absolutely fine in terms of fuel and food here but we're gonna do a couple more a um, couple more constructions while we have the ability to do so uh, we actually have a lot of ability to do so here so i'm thinking what we're going to do is we're going to just build a new little neighborhood over here just around the side. Wow, that's a very wonky road, isn't it? There we go. All right, that's absolutely fine. And then we'll just go for this. There you are. Nice and easy. There we go. Very nice. Okay, yeah, so that's obviously going to be fine. They're hopefully going to be getting the tannery up and running sometime soon because then we can finally start getting some leather and that will then be turned hopefully into something. Hopefully we can get, I don't even know, Really, um, I don't know. I don't even know whether that's even going to get us some clothing. <laughs> Hopefully it will. Oh, well, I'll just I'll just leave it and we'll see whether that actually does do it. But I'm I'm a bit skeptical because I'm thinking that maybe I do need to get sheep or maybe I need to import something. But I need a development point to be able to even, you know, get trade routes. Anyway, Berrytown is doing pretty well. Hmm. Are they doing well? Uh, yeah, I guess they're doing fine. How? What do we have here? I, I need to check. 97 clay, 28 leather. Why do I not see... Where's the other thing? The roof tiles. I'm not seeing any roof tiles. Why not? I have 62 roof tiles. Why can't I see that on here? Oh, there we go. 62 roof tiles. Okay, great. Yeah, so we have that, and I've spec'd into this. Okay, so that's great. So what do we need to do now, obviously, is get a trading post. So I will just get the trading post to go here. Uh, should I get a livestock one as well? I'm actually not entirely sure if that's even necessary, but I think I, it's, it's probably not, right? It's probably not necessary. But yeah, everything's being built now. And uh, yeah, so basically this is what's going to go. This is what's going to go down. And uh, if you're obviously following the game on Steam, you you may have seen that there was an announcement from the developer themselves, and they basically said that they were just quantifying a couple of things, clarifying some things, and basically just trying to say, hey, you know, this game is not going to be focused on combat. That's not what the game is all about. The game the game's primary focus is on a medieval simula simulation experience that is all to do with city building and the difficulties that come along with that. As you've seen from, from my series so far, everything has been very difficult to maintain, at least when you first initially start out, at least for me, I... I was really struggling super, super hard in the beginning because I was thinking to myself, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get this particular resource? Like, for example, in, uh, not in Bertildia, but in Barneyville, we're having a huge problem with clothing. So what's the best way to get clothing? Well, that's the question, right? I mean, I could get, could get hides from here if I didn't have a hunting, um, 
you know, a rich deposit of, of animals over there. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just speed things up now and we're going to see what actually happens. I've got, uh, hopefully we have a lot of hides. I'm, I'm not entirely sure whether they're even doing that. We have zero clothing, as you can see, because we have no leather, linen, and so on and so forth. So yeah, it does seem as though we need the tannery. Can you please create the tannery? I really need you to create the tannery super, super badly, fellows. It's going to be extremely useful for you. Let's just build this road over here. Can I not do it between them? No, I cannot. Oh, now I am infinitely sad. Oh, well, never mind. Hopefully it will be done relatively soon. I, and now this is the funny thing as well. You do have to be very much on the ball when it comes to going from, you know, region to region. You need to keep an eye on absolutely every single thing that happens. Because if you go too fast, you're then initially going to be like, oh, now now my, my one region is having huge problems. You know what I mean? And so that's the reason. Anyway, once this tannery has some people working in it, they should be able to get some clothing. And in which case, that is then going to fulfill the criteria to get this to level two. And it's the same thing, really, with um, if you were to take a look at Reformia here. Um, you know, I obviously have the ability now to level things to level three because we have enough um, tavern stuff which is actually really cool. And uh, let me actually just see here. Uh, Burgers plot level two. Yeah, so we need planks. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah, that's exactly the reason why I definitely should not have done that. Way back, if you recall, I said, oh, we don't really need planks, do we? Yeah, we actually kind of do. Yeah, we actually kind of do. So it really would have made a, a, a pretty big difference. Actually, you know what? I don't I don't want to get the dye workshop right now. I don't want to get the dyes workshop right now. That I feel like that's probably not going to be particularly useful for us. Um, now, where is the saw pit? Because I'm looking for that right now, and I am not seeing it. Am I... Am I stupid? Did I not build a saw pit? I think I did. It's there. There it is. Ah, wow. That's really weird. Okay. We're going to put some uh, put some livestock on here as well. We're just going to make sure that we have a couple of couple of livestock on the saw pit. And uh, we're going to make sure that one's on here as well. There we go. And we should probably get some more, to be honest. I have a huge amount of stable space. We've got four. And I do have 200 regional wealth. So it's probably going to make sense for me to uh, maybe have a look at one of the um, one of the stables. There's the stable. So we can order another ox right there from that one. Some resource disappear. Uh, yeah, we understand that they disappear when it's getting cold. I'm not entirely sure why that tutorial message came up just now because that's a thing that's been up there for a while. But there you go. All right, let's put some people on here too. And then, yeah, okay. So this is going to be available in 30 days, as you can see. All right, so yeah, that's absolutely fine. We are going to be really, really okay during the winter. No one's going to be having too many problems here. And we are now finally expanding in Berrytown too. And the trading post is under construction. Obviously, that's going to take a while because we don't have that much timber. We only have nine of those, but hopefully that will somewhat change as we go forward and then I can actually start upgrading some more of these things to level two. This is obviously a, a way that you can gain regional wealth over time. I feel like the, the progression system of the game is very, very well done, very well thought out because they basically give you multiple avenues to gain regional wealth. And obviously it is a long game. You know, it's a long game. It's not one of those games that you're going to jump in for 15 minutes and then you're going to be done. No, we've been playing for many, many hours. You and me, you know, we've been playing for, for this many, this many hours. And it's still, we're still here. We're still here in the same game, you know, in the same, in the same campaign, shall we say. So that really makes a huge difference. Um, but th that's exactly what I wanted to try to impart to you right now where if if you're having problems getting regional wealth you don't need to worry about it too much because 
as long as you can fulfill the criteria to get a level 2 burgage plot, which isn't too bad. It is literally just getting clothing, so that means linen, leather, yarn, and then getting two different kinds of foods. And you're always going to have fuel because, let's face it, if you don't have fuel, then, well, what are you doing? You, gotta, you, you have to have fuel for every single month, so you need that. And then apart from that, you just need to get a church. And then obviously a well as well, but, you know, it, it's pretty pretty easy to do that you know super super easy and simple to to get a well so that's it that's all you need to do to get to level two on a burgage plot and obviously you need timber as well to be able to actually upgrade it and then once you've done that every single month your level two burgage plots are going to give you one regional wealth which you know if you think about it from a, a perspective of you know this is not a lot of money no it isn't it isn't a lot of money at all you know getting one regional wealth per family per month for level two burgage plots that's absolutely minuscule that's one of the most minuscule things that you can do but you've got to remember that you're playing for years potentially you're playing for years in this game and so that means that when you're playing for years and every single month goes by you're going to think, oh, actually, you know what? It's not that bad. Because just think about it. If you get so many burgage plots to level two, let's say you get every single one of your every single one of your things to level two. I mean, I, I've actually got to level up a whole bunch more here. Um, because uh, if I get five of them to level two, as you can see right here, we're going to get to a large village and then I get another development point. So very, very cool. But anyway... All I'm trying to say to you right now is that once they're level two, every single month, let's say 12 months in a year, right? 12 months in a year, that means that you're going to be getting 12 regional wealth every single year from every single level two burgage plot. So that means that it's 12 times however many level two burgage plots you have, which is a significant amount. And I'm going to show you because look at look at look at Reformia right now. L look at Reformia. Uh, they don't tell you right now. This is something that I would obviously like to see added. Maybe I don't know. Um, but what I'd like to actually see is how many. Well, I, I know how many burgage plots I have, obviously, but I don't know how much money that's actually generating. I mean, I'd have to do the calculation myself. And let's face it, I'm so good at maths that I know what two times, uh, I mean, two plus two is. I know what two plus two is. It's five. So, you know, don't, don't you know, you, you don't need to challenge me on, on maths, right? Okay. Everything's going to be okay. So, yeah, apart from that, you can see here, I have two, uh, actually 34, <laughs> 34 level two burgage plots. That means that 34 times 12 you know, we're getting that amount in regional wealth every single year, which is really, really good. However, funnily enough, I I could upgrade more. I could get more. Look at this. I could just upgrade more. And why not? There's nothing restricting me from leveling these burgage plots to level two. It's 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 just good. You know, it's it's just good for me to be able to level these to level two because every single time obviously i do this i'm i'm technically gaining regional wealth in exchange for just a little bit of timber and i don't have a huge amount of um i don't have a huge amount of uh, timber right now which is actually really bad so i think what i'm gonna do is i'm going to get a saw pit right next to this logging camp and we're gonna do that just purely for the fact that I really need to. Uh, I, I, I really, really badly need to because I, I've just actually killed myself, basically, by getting planks and selling them. That is probably... Okay, here's the greatest mistake that I possibly made in Manor Lords. And that's that I sold my planks. Don't sell your planks. Okay, don't sell your planks and then you'll be absolutely fine because you're going to need them. You will need planks dramatically to be able to level up your burgage plots from level two to level three. It's very important that you keep your planks.
and also obviously make sure that you have enough clay and so on and so forth to be able to make roof tiles and then level them from there as well because as you see you're going to need so many uh so many level ups for your burger plots you're going to need 10 of those 10 of those suckers and then the you know and then you're going to be able to get to a medium town i have no idea what we're going to be needing after that because there are no level ups for the burgage plot level three, as you can see. So I have no idea what's going to happen then. But very cool nevertheless, right? I personally think that's very cool. Otherwise, apart from that, we can create new units. What do we want to go for? I can go for some more archers. Let's do it. There you go. We got some more archers right here. And I think what I should probably do, um, hilariously enough, is... Um, why did they only give me 18 there? Do I not have enough people? Recruits missing. Ah, yes, I don't have enough people. All right. Oh, okay. I see. So wait a minute. Oh, I can just right click on those guys. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I had no idea. I had no idea that you could do that. Okay, wait a minute. Let me just let me just disband a couple of militia right here. Okay, that's pretty cool. Can't find a storehouse for excess weapon storage. Okay, yeah, I don't even need to worry about that too much. Um, because I'm gonna get some... Should I get some more spear militia? Should I get some more spears? There you go. We got 26 of those guys. Okay, so we got two of these now. Okay, yeah, I see, I see. And we need more spears to be able to make that work. Or I could go for more archers. It might be good for me to get more archers, actually, now that I think about it. So let's get some more archers. Look at that. Look at that. All right. That's looking really nice, actually, all things considered. I think that's pretty fun. Okay. Anyway, Bertildia actually needed my attention, so I'm going to be going over there. The tannery is done, right? Yes. Yes. The tannery is done. But the question is, where is it? I always lose it. I am an absolute imbecile. Where is it, actually? No, wait. This is Bertildia. This is... Wait a minute. This is actually not where I wanted to go. But they said that something had happened in Bertildia that I needed to uh, take care of. And now I've forgotten what it is. Yes. Now I've absolutely forgotten what it is. Oh well, never mind. I guess it I guess it wasn't that important. Okay, well, I need to get level 3 burgage plots now. And that's going to be super easy, actually. That is going to be very very easy for us to do. Unfortunately, I don't have a huge amount of timber. We are getting a lot more now. So that's great. So I guess the best thing for me to do is actually just level every single one of these burgage plots to level 2. It's going to take a long long time for us to do that, but it's going to be pretty important for us in the long run. There we go. And I have so much money. I mean, really, so much money right here. Okay, so there's the tailor shop. The tailor shop is obviously working. And to level this up to level 3, we need a tavern, obviously. We're going to need barley. And we're going to need the ability to turn that into... Uh, well, turn the, the barley into malt. And then turn that into ale easy enough very very easy for us to be able to do that and let me see here are they actually creating what i want them to create uh yeah i want them to create spears actually do i have a lot of planks yes i want them to create spears i actually really like spears to be honest i think that's really really nice um there we go they're refueling that and they they are now going to be creating spears so that's what we want them to create they're going to create so many in this region because we have so much iron it is ludicrous and apart from that obviously we are going to be creating gambasons um we could also create cloaks as well but i'm actually not entirely sure what is good here what is good that's the question i don't know we're gonna need uh we've got this clothing okay wait a minute clothes shoes cloaks Okay, clothes, shoes, cloaks. Okay, so that means that if I want to actually advance this, I'm going to need to give them clothes, not gambasons. So what, 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 what are these for? For soldiers, I guess? Yeah, I guess I'm going to create the clothes then instead. Because primarily, I mean, soldiers are not going to really be that applicable for me at the moment. 
And obviously you're going to need to upgrade your church. So the church itself is going to be extremely easy for us to upgrade. As you can see, boom, it's already basically done. I just need to click on the little upgrade button and that's going to do its own thing. Um, yeah, so apart from that, we also do need to get a malt house. And, <laughs> you guessed it, we're going to have to get something to be able to grow barley. Oh yeah, this is going to be a bit problematic for us. Okay, I'm looking for... Oh dear. Oh no. Okay, are you seeing what I'm seeing right now? Oh dear. Oh my. We're going to have to import barley. That's bad. I really didn't want to do that. Oh well, never mind. We're going to have to import it. This is really, really awful, actually. I'm not a big fan of this. Okay. Well, let's do it, shall we? Let's do it. Okay. We're going to need... Mm, there it is. It's going to cost me 12. Oh no, let's establish the trade route. Oh dear. Okay, let's import barley. Um, I don't even know what this means. Deliver the animal. Order a new horse. Sure, I'll do that. But I have no idea what that actually means. I guess it's going to be good. Uh -huh. Anyway. Um, okay, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of maths here. Which is, again, one of my strongest suits. So let's have a look here. If I get... Oh, uh, no. I don't want just 10. I don't want just 10. I want 50. I want a huge amount. But it's going to cost me a lot of regional wealth which is something I really am not a big fan of. I want more than this, actually. I want to get so much. I think 50 is probably going to be enough, though. Right? Hopefully it is. Hopefully. Cross your fingers and hope that it is. Anyway, um, yeah, apart from that, we are now going to need a malt house. There it is. And I'm going to put it really close by, actually, to where we currently are, because we're going to need to go there super fast. Here's the end of the road. Let's put the road over here. And the malt house is here. And we're just going to put that just at the end. There we are. That's fine. And uh, yeah, we should get some more residential, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should get some more residential. This is literally one of my favorite, favorite regions. Apart from the fact that I can't actually uh, grow barley, that's the weak point of this region. And that's the cool thing about this game in general. You're going to indeed be having these kinds of situations where you have to balance it. You have to balance it very, very well here. And obviously, if you are someone that is really, really good at city builders and things like that, I'm not. But if you're really good at city builders, you're going to have a wonderful supply chain already set up with the pack station and the trading system. And you're going to be importing all these things. You're going to be exporting all those other stuff, you know, all that other stuff to your other regions and making it work that way. You're going to have a great time. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Thankfully, my fuel situation is currently becoming a lot better so i'm really pleased about that actually i was very worried and how are we doing with in terms of clay is the clay gone is the clay gone yeah the clay is definitely out of there so let's actually get people off that there you go all right um, so yeah, we're actually good in Bertildia. Barneyville is looking really nice too, actually, surprisingly enough. And I can now start upgrading this too, I believe. Yes, there we go. We can now start upgrading these to level 2. And then we can get a development point, and then we can actually start finally getting some, uh, getting some money. Because I, uh, I will have the ability to build an iron deposit. Um, you know, mining operation over there. And yeah, it's going to be a fantastic time. So let's get some additional... Uh, additional... Uh, that's not a particularly good way to go about it. No. Additional residential. Let's go for something like this. Yeah, I, uh, I, need, to, I need to get a lot better at, at actually doing this in my next game. That's for sure. Okay, let's just go like... This, I guess. Oh, wow, that's looking that's looking pretty, pretty rough. But I think it looks cool, though. I think it looks cool. I don't know. 
Anyway, wild animals, my hunting camp. I, you know, my hunting camp is not actually. <laughs> they they seem very slow. Let's just say that they seem very slow. I actually kind of wonder whether I should get another hunting camp. Should I? I don't know. I mean, we have so ma so much food and everything, and my uh, my tannery right here is doing absolutely fantastically. Obviously, that's the reason why we have so much clothing and leather and so on. As you can see, we have 12 leather at the moment, which is very nice. And how's the Woodcutter's Lodge doing? That's absolutely fine. I mean, technically, I could get the Charcoal Kiln. We are inevitably going to need the Charcoal Kiln, um, you know, because I need to then get the Deep Mining Upgrade. That's going to be very important for us. So, yeah, I don't know. Okay, how are we doing in terms of barley here? Yeah, as you can see, once more, another region that has farming basically being completely blocked off. I mean, you can farm here, but it's going to give you very low yields. And obviously, that's not something that you want. You want to have as much, you know, as much payoff as possible. Anyway, um, where is my small stable? It's over here. There we go. I'm going to order another ox because we currently only have two and I would like to get the maximum that I currently have available. You know, capacity, you know, I have I have four, um, four spaces. So it would be really nice if we could make that work. And it seems like there's no one on the stone here because there is no point. There is no stone anymore. So I might as well remove the person from that and then just... Demolish the stone cutter's camp. Um, actually, not entirely sure whether I should even do that because then it's going to be uncovered, and uh, the game doesn't seem to like that kind of thing. So maybe it would be a good idea for me to just leave it. Um, yeah. Okay. So apart from that, do we? Mm, yes, we need one of these things to get roof tiles. I need a clay furnace, don't I? Because do I have? Do I actually have clay? I think I do. Right. Yes, I have 70 clay, which is not that much, but it should be enough. Um, I don't even know where to get this, actually. I don't, I, I don't have enough goods. I don't have enough stone. What? Wait a minute. Do I need someone on this to actually transport it or what? Because I have stone. I have 130 stone, it says. That's weird. Now I can build it. Ah, okay. So I do actually need a person on that. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. All right. That's fine. Ah, uh, there we go. Bertildia has now gotten their policies unlocked. That's nice. Okay, let's do it. All right. Ooh, ooh, wait. Ah, oh, no, this is locked. Ah, oh, so sad, so sad. Okay, well, that's fine. Wild animals on rich deposits breed twice as fast. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, yeah. This is insanity. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to take this. This is, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm blown away by this. This is an amazing, amazing perk to take. Boom. Look at that. Oh, you know what I'm going to do now, right? You know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to get another one of those. Another one of those um, wonderful, wonderful hunting camps. You know what? I'm going to get two. I'm going to get two of these suckers. I'm going to get two of these guys. Come on now. Let's do it. Let's get let's get this one very high. And let's get this built. Let's get this built, fellows. Come on now. Yeah, so Bertildi is obviously going to be doing absolutely fine. But the fuel situation is going to be the main issue here. Uh, the firewood is at 290. I have a charcoal kiln. Apparently. But where is the charcoal kiln? Was it over here that I placed it? Um, wait a minute. Where did I place it? I thought I placed it. Did I place it here? Or I, you know, see, this is exactly the reason why I want to see the names. <laughs> why I want to see the names of things. Because I completely just lose track of where everything is. Even though I place things in relatively natural locations. Because, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, saw pit next to logging camp, next to forester's hut, and so on. And I'm putting the clay furnace here because it's next to the iron deposit, so I can kind of remember that it's a similar thing. 
but I don't remember <laughs> I don't remember building a charcoal kiln because I don't actually have the uh, the development for it, do I? No, see? I don't have it. I don't even have it. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on with that, but yeah, anyway, let's move on. So Reformia is doing absolutely fine as you can see here. Um, but I obviously don't have the ability to level up any more burgage plots because I don't I still don't have any planks. For some reason. This is not done. Why why is this not done yet? Okay, well that should be done relatively soon. Berry Town is doing really, really well, actually. And uh yeah, you know what? Let's get some more residential. There we go. Do I have enough uh yeah, I don't have enough planks, uh, wood, timber, whatever. I don't have enough for, for that. Uh, I do have enough for this one, though. Yeah, that's good. Let's do something like that. There we go. All right. Uh, let's, let's actually speed things up a little bit, shall we? Let's speed things up a little bit and see how we do, because obviously I do want to try, if I can, I need to get another couple of burgage plots, which is also the reason why my timber is doing so badly, but... Maybe, you know what, you know what, let's uh, let's put another person on the logging camp here. Where is it? There's the logging camp. Put another person on that. I mean, technically, it would be good for me to move the, the logging camp a little bit, you know, into the, uh, into the trees here, but... Ah, uh, I guess it's fine. Uh, where's the forester's camp? I didn't build one? Uh-huh, yeah, see, that's a problem. Forester's hut. I don't think I built one, at least. Mm, it's not looking... No, it's not looking like I did. No, it is not looking like I did. Okay, that's pretty bad, actually. That is pretty bad. But, yeah. Well, never mind. I, I guess it's going to be fine. Let's put some people on here and on there. Construction is complete. There we are. We're getting another one. Soon, hopefully, are we? Uh, n no, I don't think so, actually. Right. Let's build another one then. There we go. And the hunting camp's doing fine. Is this a rich deposit, actually? No, it's not a rich deposit. Uh, no, the clay is the rich deposit here. And the forester's hut needs to be done quite soon. But we are otherwise doing fine, because look at the approval rating. It's all good. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. Because what I'm going to need to do is I'm just going to need to let the uh, need to let the game run. Going to need to do um, do a couple of things for myself. Obviously, going to need to just do some managing of the place because that's that's what a city builder is all about, and that is exactly what it is delivering. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I think Forester's Hut very important. Let's get that. I think what I'm going to do is, once we get that other burgage plot up and running, hopefully it will be done quite soon. We'll be able to get another development point. And I'm thinking then we'll do probably charcoal burning and get to deep mining because we're going to need um, the ability to do the clay furnace and everything. There you go. Barneyville actually increased as well, surprisingly enough. Okay, that's funny. It seems like they are advancing at a relatively similar pace. That's pretty cool. I like that. Let's put a person on here. And what we're going to do is, before I end this episode off, we're going to be selling roof tiles. Look at the roof tiles and how much they're actually going to be selling for. It's eight. They literally sell them for eight, which is crazy good. So apart from that, is there anything else that is actually good? No, this is... Oh. Oh, okay. This is the most expensive good apart from weapons that you can export. Whoa. Okay. This is a gold mine. This is an absolute gold mine. Let's get this. Let's export some roof tiles. Okay, I have no idea how much we should really export. I guess we'll just keep, I don't even know how much, 25 on us or something like that. I don't know. Um, I guess that's going to be fine, and we'll just leave two people on construction and everything. And yeah, we're we're absolutely fine here. Great, it's going very very well. And yes, Barneyville finally leveled up. Okay, that's great too. That's wonderful. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure. Why do I only have 18 regional wealth here? 
I didn't spec into trade logistics yet. I need to spec into trade logistics so that I can get the iron up and running. Uh, but yeah, we've got a hunting camp here. I'm going to put two people on that straight away. Very important. Let's go for the hunting limit of five. Hunting limit of five. Let's do that. Yeah, as you see, when population of a herd drops to this number, workers will stop hunting. Now, what's going to be funny about this is that this deposit over here of wild animals, I am almost 100% certain this is never going to decrease below 20. They respawn too fast for that to happen. And you'll see exactly why. It's going to be really, really powerful for us. Um, yeah, so apart from that, we should also be advancing our people a little bit further here. Um, yeah. So let's get a couple of these things uh, leveled up. And I'm going to get it. You see, I'm getting carried away right now. I'm getting carried away super, super hard. Um, but that's just how it goes, you know. That's just how it goes. It's this kind of game, you know. It's this kind of game where you just go, yeah, you know what? I just need to do this one extra thing. And then, yeah, it's all great. Anyway, uh, I should probably get a mana as well, shouldn't I? Yeah, I need one, but I don't have any timber. <laughs> I don't have any timber. So I'm going to need to actually build maybe another logging camp or something. It seems like my logging camp is doing a really good job but the forester's hut is not doing so well as you can see so i don't know anyway as i said to you i'm just gonna let the game run a little bit i'll do some managing myself in my off screen time and we'll see how it goes but everything is going really really well no brigands to speak of because i think all the regions have been captured now so i don't think oh hello can i actually can i actually do this <laughs> Oh. Uh, right. Huh. Uh, can I... Ah, I can do that. There we go. Send. Okay, I sent the letter to him. Is that actually going to do anything for me? <laughs> it's going to reduce my relation with the brigands. I don't know what that's really going to do, because it's probably an early access feature that isn't yet implemented or anything like that, but... I think that's quite funny, nevertheless. Yeah, we have so many so many regions here that we could potentially... Um, I think we could probably capture these, but... As I say, I'm probably going to need to... Um, I'm probably going to need to declare war on this guy, as you can see right here. And then he's going to start attacking us. But, of course, I'm not yet ready for that, I don't think. Uh, I mean, funnily enough, I think I might be able to because I uh, I am actually producing weapons now at this particular region. Uh, so let me actually just have a quick look here. Clothing store. I'm still not... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why am I not producing clothes? Is it because... No, I should, I should be producing clothes. That's weird. Huh. Do I need more people on this? That's a bit weird. I mean, I have 11 spears, 40 small shields, 41 war bows. 11 spears only? Why only 11 spears? Is it because I just sold some stuff? Because maybe I need to stop selling as much as I am. Let me just take a quick look. Yes. Okay. Let me just... I'm going to make it so that we have um, a surplus of 50. All right, so we're going to keep 50 tools, and otherwise we're going to export everything else. We have enough regional wealth as it is right now, so I actually don't even need to worry about any any, any of that. So it's not that big a deal. But the smithy, we're going to put, put that on here. It needs refueling. Why isn't it being refueled? We've got loads of fuel. Hmm. Okay, hopefully that's going to be refueled, uh, refueled relatively soon. Um, because we do have the woodcutter here who is actually doing that. Let's put another person on that as well. Yeah, otherwise everything seems to be going absolutely fine. And obviously, uh, this is where everything becomes crazy. Because now I uh, literally can just expand. Massively, in actual fact. Massively. And we, I guess I'll just get some more residential. 
uh, you know, I guess I'll just do that. I mean, why not, right? I have so much timber right now. Look at this. Look at that. I can literally just fill out an entire neighborhood. Boom. Straight up. <laughs> and the approval rating is so massive that we are absolutely fine. Excess food needs to be moved to a granary. I do have one. I do have one. It's a large one, as you can see right there. Do I need to put more people on this? I mean, I've got a bunch of people on it, so why not? Yeah, there you go. And uh, we now have 11 sheep. I am still importing sheep. Bear that in mind. Because obviously I wanted to try to produce as much... Um, as, well, as, as many clothes as possible. But my tailor doesn't seem to be doing what I'm asking him to do. Uh, he needs linen. Oh, he needs... Wait! He needs dyes! Oh, I'm an idiot. I didn't know that. Alright. He needs dyes. Right. Okay. There we go. So that's that's the other purpose for the dyeing thing. Right. There's the... Wait, no. That's not it. Where's the dyeing thing? There it is. Oh, I'm dying inside right now because I didn't realize that that was actually the case. Okay. That's really... Well, that's, that's kind of annoying, isn't it? Okay. Where's the berries? Okay. The berries are over there. Obviously, my forager hut is going out and doing its thing. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's a bit of a rude awakening, wasn't it? Yes, that's a bit of a rude awakening. Haha, -ha, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, well, we can just put one person on this, one person on this. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's going to be fine. I just want to continue. I want to continue making as many tools as possible. So we're just going to be making sure that we have as much of that as, as we can. Um, I'm actually wondering whether I should put more people on the mine. Because we have an infinite supply now. And I'm also wondering whether I should get another smithy. And another uh, bloomery. It might make sense. I don't know. It might make sense. But yeah, we uh, that's the reason. <laughs> See, that's exactly my point. There's still more to learn every single time. It's, it's an extremely deep game, hilariously enough. Considering you think, you know, initially, oh yeah, you're just going to need this, this, and this. And then it's going to be absolutely fine. But even, even someone like myself who has played for a long time now, it still, it still just kind of surprises you, you know? And that's incredible. That's an extremely, extremely fun experience. Really quite amazing. Where's the tannery? <laughs> where, where did I put the tannery? Uh, I think I put it over here somewhere, didn't I? Uh, I thought I put it... Oh no. Oh no. There it is. Okay, no, no, we have people on it. We have people on it. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, I'm going to need to put more people on the forager's hut though. Super badly, actually. Uh, how many oxes do I have? I have three. So having three unassigned families is absolutely fine. Yeah, so the dyer's workshop is going to be done and then we'll be, we'll be good. Anyway. That is going to be it for this episode. Like I said, I'm going to get carried away otherwise. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.